So I'm going to ask you a question, all right? So, so you and uh, your awesome wife, Ethel, have raised three kids, and they're out on their own. They are. I'm not going <laughs> to ask if that was a point of sadness or rejoicing. Maybe <laughs> save that for you know, another, another conversation. Yes. <laughs> um, but those of us who, um, who have children, what would you say, what counsel would you give us on talking to our kids about this type of stuff? Yeah, because they're going to experience or experience it in some way at some point. Yeah, um, I would make two or three suggestions on that. I think number one, moms and dads, um, as best as you can, make your culture in your home um, such that um, questions are welcome, where kids aren't afraid to ask questions about anything, but especially about God. Um, I read an interesting interview with uh, Dan Brown. Dan Brown is a famous author. Years ago, I think it was in the 1990s, maybe early 2000s, he wrote a series of books. The first one was The Da Vinci Code, and it was very, very controversial. And I read an interview with um, Dan Brown uh, in Prague Magazine. And uh, the interviewer said, you know, a lot of Christians view what you wrote as blasphemous and heresy and those kinds of things, and you consider yourself an atheist, right? And, you know, what led you to believing this way and writing this kind of stuff? And uh, Dan Brown told this story. He said that when he was 12 years old, um, he um, went to church, and when he was 12 mm-hmm. years old, he went to his uh, priest's office and mm-hmm. knocked on the door, and he went in, and he sat down, and he said, I have a question. And he said, my question, he asked the priest, was, is this. On Monday through Friday when I go to school, I'm taught that the world came about by accident and just by evolution. But when I come to church on Sunday, I'm told that God created everything. So Dan Brown, young Dan Brown, 12 years old, asked, which one is true? And he said the priest looked at him and said, good boys don't ask those kinds of questions. And Dan Brown said he stood up, walked out of that office, and left not only the priest behind, but left God behind as well. So obviously you can't attribute everything that he wrote in these. They are, those books do come, come Um, have blasphemy. They do contain a lot of heresy. You can't blame it all on that, but I'm making the point that we've got to create a culture in our homes where questions are welcome. And uh, so number one, parents do that. I know it's hard, you know, because nobody's better at asking hard questions than kids, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so let me, let me tell parents real quick, um, a couple of um, helpful websites that you can go to, a couple of resources. One of them is um, GQ Kids. GQ KIDZ GQ Kids not like GQ the magazine. <laughs> no, it's, right. it's okay. actually based on GQ got questions.org. Um, I for years I've been a volunteer researcher and writer for them and we have at gotquestions.org we have over half a million answers um, instantly available to questions about God and Jesus and the Bible and cults. This is the this is the children's version of gotquestions.org. Mm. So GQ kids.org. Parents go to that. And uh, you can find a lot of questions that kids ask and how to answer them. Um, also, um, I would suggest um, if you have teenagers, or actually let me mention also with children, Jay Warner Wallace's series called Cold Case Christianity for Kids. He was a forensic uh, detective, cold case detective, and long story short, he was an atheist, became a Christian. He's written all these great books to help us defend our faith. And now he's written a curriculum for children, like mm-hmm. up to age 12. So cold case Christianity for kids. So moms and dads, if you have kids at home up to about age 10 or 12, I recommend those two sources, resources. You go to them. It's okay. And read for yourself and kind of equip yourself. Educate yourself on these things. So when the kids ask questions, you can have a play, you know, have some answers. For teenagers, Pastor Jeff, this is interesting. Um, a lot of people are familiar with the statistics. And this is from maybe three, five years ago mm-hmm. that 80%, get this, 80% of high school students who identified as Christians four years later after they graduate from high school and go to college no longer identifies Christians. Mm-hmm. 80%, eight out of 10 high school students. So four years, and of course that raises the question, what happened to them at the university that mm-hmm. you know, destroyed their faith? And there's a lot of answers to that, mm-hmm. a lot of possibilities. But by the way, just pull over for a minute and think about this. If, if our military w- was in a battle and suffered 80, an 80% casualty rate, We would do something serious about that. Mm -hmm. That would get our attention. But here's what's interesting and frightening. Watch this. That was three years ago, five years ago. Now we're seeing that the age at which 
um, teenagers abandon the faith is, is younger and younger, mm -hmm. 16, 15, even 13 years old. Mm -hmm. Here's why. Because a lot of us, when we were younger, especially if you were raised in a Christian home, you weren't exposed to competing worldviews until you went to college. Mm -hmm. You went to college and you heard all these other ideologies and worldviews and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And a lot of people lost their faith. Well, now it's happening earlier and earlier. Why? The internet. Right social and media. social media, so yeah. they're exposed yeah. at the age of 12, 13 years old mm -hmm. to this stuff that a lot of us didn't hear until we were in college. Mm -hmm. So, first thing I would say is create a culture in your home where kids know that their questions are welcomed. And if you don't know the answer, it's okay, mom, dad, find the answer with them. And I think that's actually the second thing I would say don't feel like you have to be the answer dad or the answer mom for every question. View it like you're going on a journey with your child. Like, let's that's a great question. You might say, let's find out the answer to this together. So it kind of gets you off the hook a little bit to feel like you have to have an answer right away. And uh, and so this is where you can like go to that gqkids.org, you know, that website for kids and their questions. Um, also, let me give you some uh, helpful websites for teenagers. Um, I recommend watching videos with your teenager by Frank Turek, Ravi Zacharias, William Lane Craig. And notice what I said, watching the videos with your teen. Teens love watching videos. All these guys, these um, outstanding um, apologists, um, you know, it'll be a four-minute answer to a question or a 10-minute answer to a question that these guys will give. Watch it with your teenager, and that way you can have a discussion about it, right? Um, also, uh, mention gotquestions.org. The teenage version of that is called 412teens, 412teens.org. So my point is this. Number one, create a culture in your home where questions are welcomed. Number two, create an environment where you explore with your child. You're going to find answers together. Mm -hmm. Something we used to do at our house is I would actually prepare discussion topics for the dinner table. Um, and so at our house anyway, our schedule worked out to where at least four or five nights a week, I guess, we were able to have dinner together. And by the way, moms mm -hmm. and dads, if you can't do that, at least do it once a week or if it's breakfast or if it's... Saturday at lunch or a brunch, set up a time when the family's together, right? And, uh, and ha you know, have a discussion topic ready to go. Usually for us, it was a current topic, a current issue, or uh, so it was more than just how was school today. It was, what do you guys think about this question? Mm -hmm. And we had some great family discussions. My kids are grown up now, as you mentioned, they're moved out of the house, but they still go back to those and refer to those times when we mm -hmm. would sit around the dinner table and have some debates. We didn't always reach an answer. And that wasn't really the point. The point was, again, to have this kind of open discussion. So create an environment where kids feel like it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to express your doubts. I would say number two, view yourself as a fellow explorer with your child, whatever their age, you know, and look for answers with them, watching videos, reading articles. And then I would say the last thing, really being more specific about how do you talk to your kids about the issue of evil and suffering, focus on what you do know. We don't know all the answers, why God allows suffering, but here's some things that we do know. Pastor Jeff already mentioned some of this in his message and in your comment a moment ago. Number one, we do know that God is good and we know that human beings um, introduced um, sin and suffering into the human experience. Number two, we know that Jesus suffers with us. So when we pray, he doesn't just answer our prayers or say, you know, God doesn't just say, sorry, you're going through that, I'll help you. He says, I know how you feel. And what a ministry that is to know that he feels mm -hmm. along with us. He hurts along with us. Yeah. Also, Romans 8, 28, the promise to believers, God works all things together for good mm -hmm. to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So again, what do we know when times are uncertain? When we don't have an answer to the why of suffering? Well, we know God didn't cause it. Um, we know that God can work it together for our good if we'll trust him and be committed to his purposes. We know that Jesus knows how we feel, and we know that only Christianity says that Jesus is coming back one day, and he's going to bring all evil to justice and put an end to all suffering. Mm -hmm. So my point is, if you, if you don't have good answers for something, focus on what you do know, mm -hmm. and those are things that we, that we do know. So um, I think if you have that kind of a environment and culture in your home, kids will be better able to think through and talk through um, the, the concerns and the doubts. And, and again, we won't leave them with good boys, good girls, don't ask that kind of a question. Wow. No, they do ask the, those kinds of questions and our good God has great answers to those questions. 
and we'll work through it together with our kids to help them find those answers. I feel I feel like you just backed up the dump truck of good practical Bible truth and like just gave us the whole, that's like a sermon. Our guys are smiling in the back. Really. That, was, that was really good, Larry, and super Thanks. practical. And I think those of us who have young kids, we look forward to um, the day to where we will have more substantive discussions other than I want more ice cream. And so so that was you know, something to look forward to as well. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button to get the latest content.